Hey everyone and welcome back to another Unreal tutorial and in this video we will be implementing our time-based focus to the player class. Since the previous video a few visual things have changed but nothing functionality wise so I've just added some color to the objects, brought in some simple materials. Basically, they're based from a flat material, which is just an exposed vector three, and the exposed scalar values for the metallic, specular, and roughness. And then from this, I've made a variant for the uh, blue, gray, and orange colors. So they're just material instances. And this was just because I noticed that the reticle is white, and it was a little bit hard to track it on the uh, the lighter colors. But now we can see exactly where the reticle's going, so it's a little bit easier to see, and I've just removed the skybox, or at least made it all gray. So if you're just wondering where things look a bit different, nothing has actually changed in the technical side of things. So with that said, what we're gonna do is we're gonna move straight on to improve our focused-based interaction. So this is still kind of aimed at the mobile side of things, I suppose. And I'm not going to add the widget into, because we'll need to look at the 3D widget system. I want to make that its own video. I think it's gonna be a little bit easier to keep track of. Uh, but we're going to add the logic in today to put this on a timer and then we're going to add the visual side of that in the in the next video so what we need to do is if we go to our player blueprint we can go to our basic gaze and we're going to be able to use a lot of this logic in the next function as well if we create a new function and we'll call this one time based gaze and like i mentioned in the basic gaze we can come here and we can copy and paste most of this in fact if we just grab everything We'll go back to the time-based gaze and we'll paste this in and then we can start changing up and getting rid of what we don't need. So if we go through the logic just to remind ourselves what's happening here, we're going to do the same thing to begin with. We need to check what we're looking at. So we're doing our call to our line trace function that we already have. We've made this pure which is why we're not getting any execution pins and this is just providing the information that we're interested in. Uh, we're going to check whether or not that's hit something and then if that has hit something we want to make sure that it is an interactive object. Now, I just wanted to mention as well, people have questioned in the past why in a lot of my tutorials or probably none that I'm aware of so far, uh, why I don't use the interfaces and the interface calls because um, it saves casting and overhead like that. Um, and I just wanted to mention that the main reason I don't use that is because in this case, for instance, and a lot of the cases in the tutorials that I make, we're normally casting for maybe one or two objects. So we only ever need to do this specific check once. Now, interfaces are really useful if you have a large number of objects which have certain functionality which you may want to check if they implement an interface call. But in regards to performance, I think what people don't realize is it still needs to cast. So at least we can narrow down here what this is being cast to uh, because we know that the only other thing we ever want to interact with is our interactive base class. Now, you could stick this into an interface and check whether an interface is used on the class that you're looking at, but um, performance-wise, it's not any cheaper, and that's only really good, like I said, if you've got a lot of things and you don't want to go through a big list of casts in your blueprint, as that's going to start getting messy. So just to answer that question, that's why I don't use interfaces very often, especially for the tutorials. It's it never goes that deep to need something quite so vague. At the end of the day, it's doing the same thing because once you check the interface and you do the call through that, it's essentially the same as casting it and using that reference. So what we're doing here is we're casting to see if we've hit the interactive base class. If something implements that, then we know that we can interact with it. So this is the bit where we're going to need to then come in and change this a little bit. So when we come here, we're going to start looking at timers now. So we've got the object that we want to interact with, and I'm going to separate that for now because we're not actually going to call this directly anymore. So in fact, we can just delete the call to the interact function. What we're going to do here is set a timer by function name. So set timer by function name. The function that we want to call it at the end of this is going to be our interact function. Now I'm going to say that we want to gaze at an object for one second before we interact with it. So that gives the player a little bit of time to make sure that they're actually looking at the object they want to look at. Because remember at the moment if we go in and we look at something you immediately jump over even if you're just glancing over and didn't actually want to move there. So we're going to avoid that with a one second delay. And from this we also want to keep track of our timer and we do this by promoting this to a variable. So we'll promote that to variable and I'll just call this one focus timer. And this just allows us to use this and clear this later uh, when we stop looking at objects and things like that. So you'll notice I've not plugged this in because there's something we want to do before actually calling this and that is to get the timer that we've just made and we want to make sure that this is clear before actually reinitiating another timer. So we'll pull off of this and we'll say clear and invalidate. 
So we'll get the clear and invalidate timer by handle. And this is just a fail safe really to make sure that whenever we look at an object, a new object, that this reference to the timer is being reset. Once that's been reset, even if it doesn't exist, this is going to be fine the first time. If it, this is already empty, then it's not a problem. If it's not, then it's just going to get rid of the data inside of this for us. Uh, with that done, we can then initiate our timer. And then in one second's time, we're going to call our interact function again. So at the moment, that's pretty much the same as what we had previously, just with a one second delay. And there's some functionality we want to put here a little bit later. So what I'm going to do is uh, this is going to be for the next video. So I'm just going to make a comment so we know where to look when we come back. And this is going to be where we implement the 3D widget. I'm just going to add a comment here so that when we come back into this class, we know one of the places that we want to look where the logic was going. And I'll just make this a color which is going to stand out when we come back. So this is going to be where we implement a call to create our 3D widget. But as I said, I'm going to leave that for a separate video just so that everything's easy to find if you wanted to reference a specific topic in this playlist. So the next thing we want to change is down here. So now that we've got the call to the function, so the same as we had previously, we're going to have this function being called. We also want to reset this and we want to do a couple of different things when we reset the timer as well. So like previously, if we are not looking at our interactive base class object or we haven't found anything at all, so we're looking at the sky or the floor, then we want to make sure that the interactive object and the focused object are set back to null, so that's still correct. But we also want to do this again, so we want to clear and invalidate the timer by handle. So we'll plug that in there, and we'll hit compile there because that is pretty much everything done. And then finally, like I did previously, I'm just going to copy and paste this comment over here because again, we're gonna do some more logic here in the next video. But for now, I'm just going to remind myself what this is gonna be. So this is going to be where we invalidate and destroy the timer when we've made it. So destroy timer if exists, which is going to remind me that we need to do an is valid check there. But uh, at the moment, we don't have those objects to spawn in or to destroy. So what we should expect now is if we go back to our event graph, first of all, we're going to replace the basic gaze for our time based gaze. We will plug this in down here and this will now call our new function. So as I said, the new function is very similar to the previous one. This is just going to give us a second before anything happens. So if we look at this for a second, we can see that we are then having the interaction starts with those objects. And this is going to be nice and easy to change. So if we go back into our function quickly, we can come back down to where we are setting the timer. And if we promote this to a variable, we'll just call this the timer length. That means that we can pretty much change this on the fly. So if we wanted our timer to be a little bit longer, we can come in and set this to three seconds. And that just means that instead of after one second that being called, this is going to be called after three seconds. So we'll have to look at this a little bit longer. And all of this will be taken into account when we implement our widget as well. So we don't need to worry too much about that. This is going to be made very universal for the widget object we'll be creating. But that is the time based functionality for viewing things. Uh, just a little bit more pleasant for most VR experiences, which means we can pretty much get rid of the basic gaze now because we've got our timer length that we can set down to something lower if we wanted it to be more instant. Now, one thing to mention is that with timers, if you've not used them before, you cannot have a zero based timer length. So if we come in, uh, nothing can be called on a timer immediately. So this now just won't work. This is quite simple to override. Just make this something really small, something unnoticeable like 0 0.01. And you've then got uh, pretty much instant interaction with the objects again. So just a small workaround there if you wanted to work with the timer, but still have it happen very, very quick. So that's pretty much everything for the time based focus functionality that I wanted to go through. So I will leave that video here for today. As always, though, if you've enjoyed the video or found it useful, then please do leave a like and share the video around. That always helps. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you want to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel. And as ever, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.